Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage, and if this is the first time you're stopping by, here's a playlist of all of our LFF episodes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, there's gonna be a new upload with something different in the world of large format photography. This week, I am gonna slow down the pace a little bit and get back to something that I did quite a few episodes ago, which was some large format meditation. This time, it's not really just going out into nature and shooting, I'm playing around with a process that I had started pre-COVID-19. Do you have a project that you had started or you were working towards and then, well, the world happened? If you do, let me know down below in the comments. I'm kind of interested to see this. I, I know a lot of photographers are going through this and I, I want to hear if you're going through it too. Well, anyway, I had a project that myself and my darkroom roommate, Steven Takis, wanted to work on together. I was initially inspired by this really neat video I saw from Ethan Moses and Joe Van Cleve where they were in his studio shooting some color direct positive stuff. And it was such a funky and cool looking process, I was like, man, this would be really cool to try out. So toward the end of 2019, I got together all of the materials. By the way, the materials for it, there's quite a lot. So we ordered the materials, got all the stuff in and started testing and testing and now we can't be near each other. <laughs> Quarantine and uh, you, know, all, you guys get it, right? You, you exist in the world, so you know what's going on. It makes it really hard. And getting back into it, I've actually spent more time this year not doing the project than working on it. Picking up the pieces can be really, really hard. I found the only way to do it was when I had a spare moment, get out the camera, get out the paper, get my notes, and just work at it. This is definitely one of those projects where the materials, we're working it in a way that they definitely weren't meant to be used. So it's tricky to just stop something, not do it for a long time, and then pick it right back up. There's definitely a lot of testing and work that goes into it. So it's been kind of hard to get back into this process. So anyway, this process, what we're doing is we're taking darkroom paper. So this is Fuji Crystal Archive, which is a color negative print paper. So this is supposed to look at a negative either in contact or under the enlarger. So we can take that color negative and give ourselves a color positive. You have to work with this stuff in complete darkness. But what this process does is you're exposing this in camera with a heavy amount of filtration to compensate for the color balance this is suited for, which is tungsten. And then you are processing it as a black and white first, re-exposing it, and then developing what you haven't re-exposed as color. And what that does is essentially gives you a reversal process when it hits the blicks, that silver uh, and the unused color bits go out, and you're left with a color positive. Now in theory, this sounds a lot easier than in practice because there are nothing but limitations in here. One of the things I love about large format, and especially these funky processes that you can do in large format, is the limitations themselves. I like working that way. I like trying to play around and see what I can do outside of what's completely repeatable and normal. Don't get me wrong, I love a good Ilfer or Kodak or Fuji film. Sometimes I just wanna change it up, and you've kinda of seen that with all these different topics I have on the channel. I love, love changing it up, and I wanna show everybody that you don't just have to load perfect, lovely, big, expensive film into the camera. You can try some other stuff. One of the things that drew me to this process in the first place is just how cost effective these materials can be once you have them, and that's the key. The upfront costs are pretty high on this stuff. So this is Fuji Crystal Archive, which is an RA4 process paper. You can buy a 100 sheet box like this for under 50 bucks. So boom, 50 cents a shot. Then you have to buy the processing chemicals. That's where it gets kind of expensive. A lot of times the chemicals for these are made for labs that are running not dozens of sheets, they're running hundreds if not thousands of sheets through roller transport processors. So you have to buy a high minimum order quantity of the chemicals that work well for this. I bought the better part of a palette to get started with this stuff. So I was aiming big and the big thing with color chemicals, they have an expiration date. Some of them will expire before you even mix them and then once you mix them, you get about a month tops before these things peter out. So it's a process that you gotta be ready to shoot quite a bit of. Anyway, so what I'm gonna show you this week, I was just heading out into, uh, into my backyard and re-experimenting with this process. So I'd already done some testing periodically earlier this year, and I was getting consistent results, but not the color cast that I wanted to. One of the harder things was trying to find the right filter pack or the right amount of correction to correct from daylight or shade 
to that tungsten color balance I needed so the paper would come out looking closer to correct. And another thing that can be limiting is this paper is enlarging paper. So it has a very slow effective speed. I think the ASA of this stuff is around 16. So once you filter through it, it's quite a bit slower than that even. And that's a lot of light. That's a lot of holding still if you're doing portraits and a lot of flash if you wanted to use flash. I chose the flash route because why not make it harder for yourself, right? I picked up a ginormous flash kit a few weeks ago because I, I knew I wanted to do this project pretty hardcore. And I got some of these old Speedatrons. These are 2400 watt second heads. Screaming amounts of power coming through these and complete overkill for anything digital or higher speed. But for lower speed materials, you'll see these Speedatron kits used a lot for people that are doing like wet plate collodion and dry plates. So I went out into the field, took Lauren and the doggos into the backyard and fired off a few shots. So the process, again, what I'm doing is I'm placing a series of black and white printing filters. So these guys right in front of the lens to correct for my color balance. And I'm still kind of experimenting as you'll see from the results. And that's gonna hopefully account for that, uh, that really tungsten balance and that blue light that's coming in. So what we're doing is we're taking that really blue and ultraviolet light and we're trying to convert it to warmer light because that's what this paper sees. So we're just exposing that onto the paper. We're adding a ton of light to make our exposure. And then once I bring it into the dark room and I mix up my chemicals, I'm mixing it up into a series of trays. I've got my trays for the black and white part of the process where I have a developer, which is just Dectol or Ilford Multigrade. I have a stop bath so I can stop that process after a couple of minutes. I have a water bath so I can wash off the excess acid from the stop bath. So I've developed out a black and white negative and once it's in the water bath and the stop is washed off, what I'm doing is I'm exposing it to another tungsten light source and this is to expose the areas that weren't developed out as a black and white negative. Those areas are now getting the positive exposure. And if I've done the right amount of exposure and the right amount of development into that image, that re-exposure is going to create my positive once I put it into the developer. What I love about this process, even though I have not even close to perfected it, is when you put that re-exposed positive into the bath, you can see it develop. So the image, just kind of like a wet plate. If you've ever seen a wet plate, I consider this like a color plate. You're putting the paper in under the light so like you can see the whole thing and the image kind of disappears into like this like blue sea and it kind of re-emerges, which I just think is the coolest thing. I can't imagine what it'll be like when I have an image that looks the right color balance I want it to be. So as you can see, my color balance, it's got some issues. I'm having fun with it though, and getting out and experimenting and taking notes. So one really important thing with this process, on the back of each sheet, I'm taking meticulous notes. What ISO did I use? What were the conditions? Camera, aperture, shutter speed what filter pack I'm using, so what numbers of filters am I using to get this. Trying to get everything together. Okay, so this really isn't meditation, this is just like working hard in the field. But I'm still gonna post this under meditation because this is how I, I get out and relax with my large format. I'm putting in the extra legwork and trying to get this thing back up and running so I can have fun with a process. At the end of the day, my rough cost per each shot of this process it's about $1.50. Uh, that's still 10% of the cost of just the film for any sort of 8x10 color. So I'm in. I'm like really into this process. I love it. And I actually kind of like the off color palette. It kind of reminds me of really expired Polaroid. One of my favorite Polaroid emulsions of all time is Polaroid 809, which is their 8x10. Expired Polaroid loses colors in like Roy G. Biv order. So you always have like that blue indigo violet cast of the really, really old stuff, but the fresher stuff had beautiful, perfect color. But once it hits expiration, you start losing red, orange, yellow, and you start getting this kind of dreamy, like it just looks retro and it looks cool. And I really like that. And I'm starting to kind of see that with this RA4 process. I love how it looks and I'm gonna keep going with it until I get something that looks correct, but I might just back it off into something that looks a little, little more dreamy too. And I look forward to playing around quite a bit more with this process. 
If you have any questions, you can drop those down below or any long form questions, you can hit me up largeformatquestions at gmail.com. And thanks and hopefully we'll see you next time for Large Format Friday.